Welcome to Fox Soul's Black Report, your daily source for black news, views, and opinions. Today is Thursday, November 24th. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Uh -huh. I'm Mimi Brown. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Romeo. Thank I'm Demi so Lovo. And on today's report, a white neighbor called the police a nine-year-old just trying to save the planet. Mimi will kick off the show with an interview from the girl's mother for more on that story. Meanwhile, early voting is now available in some counties in Georgia. This after the state argued that allowing voting this weekend would be illegal. Then, a Florida a &M student who went viral for posting nude in her graduation photos gets a victory after months of not being able to get internship. Plus, some side hustles you may want to consider this holiday season. The bougie banker stops by to give us some ideas on that. And you may be at home now putting together the finishing touches on that Thanksgiving dinner. Well, Chef Kelly Farrell is going to help you craft the perfect Thanksgiving meal. We have all of that and so much more. This is our voice and our truth. So let's get it. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We start today with a story that is going viral. It's about a nine-year-old girl doing her part to save the environment when out of nowhere, she is confronted with racism. Last month, Bobby Wilson was spraying trees along her Codwell, New Jersey street to protect against an invasive insect when suddenly she was confronted by an officer. Hi, how are you? What's going on? Is that your mom? What's that? Oh, what are you using the sponsor? You're trying to catch him? Mm -hmm. Is this your mom coming down the street? Yeah. Okay. Now that encounter was sparked by a phone call from a white neighbor. Bobby's mother, Monique Joseph, she joins me now with more on this story. Monique, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, first off, we want to know, we have to ask, how's your daughter doing? Um... How's Bobby doing? So initially I thought she was okay. And then as the day started progressing, she started complaining of belly aches and her tummy was hurting. Um, the good news is we had her pediatrician appointment set up for the 16th for a normal yearly routine checkup. And I made sure the pediatrician was aware of what's going on. And she believes that um, this is how the stress of it and anxiety is mm -hmm. showing up. Um, and Bobby, that's how it shows up on little girls, little kids, I should say. Yeah. So I know that she has a little stress and anxiety from the situation. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a lot for a nine-year-old to deal with. I have a son who is nine years old, too, so I can only imagine. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the man who called the police. So he lives across the street from you. He called a non-emergency police line to report your daughter. According to the transcript, he says, quote, there's a little black woman spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees. I don't know what the hell she's doing, scares me. And then he repeats, she scares me though. Now that phone call was enough to send a police officer uh, to your neighborhood. How did you react when you saw the officer uh, just talking to your daughter? What's the first thing that came to your mind? The first thing that came to my mind is what is going on because Prior to me seeing him approach Bobby, mm -hmm. I was able to see when I came out my front door, I saw that the police car was actually across the street at my neighbor's home and he was talking through the passenger door. So I heard my neighbor say to the officer when he was rolling off, mm -hmm. go get her. And that's so it immediately I was saying to myself, like trying to put it together, like, could this be? Could this be what he was referring to? So I was honestly, I was confused. Mm -hmm. Um, my heart was racing because at the end of the day, it's my daughter. Right. Um, and typically the police here, they don't, you know, they don't stop and talk to people, right? They don't do that. So I knew he was stopping for a reason. And I just wanted to get there quick enough so that he didn't really have an opportunity to, to engage with her. Absolutely. It sounded like from the video that you knew this neighbor very well or that you've had dealings or interactions with him before. Yes, absolutely. So we've lived here for eight years. He's been here quite a long time before that. Um, I've known him up and close and personal and his family, his wife, I should say, mm -hmm. um, back in 2020 during the pandemic, I remember being outside six feet apart, um, talking to her across the street and I can tell she was distressed. Um, she shared with me what was going on. She was afraid to take him to the hospital. I asked if she had an oxygen O2 reader, um, because I knew from the news that that was important that the doctors would want to know. And I said, you know what? I have one home. 
I'll bring it to you, I'll sanitize it, you know, don't take him if you don't feel comfortable, call up your doctor, at least try to do a telemed visit. And, you know, that was me being a neighbor, that was me being friendly and she received it and we had a couple text exchanges. So we were friendly, you know, the block party, mm -hmm. she texted me, make sure you come in Monique, bring the girls. Um, she ran a the, um, the rec center. I don't know if she ran it, but the girls did a summer camp at um, a recreation center in town. Um, and she was there and, you know, every morning she greeted us, the girls, mm -hmm. he ran a community center where the girls went to summer camp and swim lessons and they're our neighbor. I open my front door and I see them and vice versa. You know, because when you put all of that together with this, it sounds like he should have been sort of familiar um, with you, with your daughter, um, mm -hmm. you know, just because you guys live across the street. You know, when I was watching this video, your daughter asked the cop if she was in trouble. And that, that just touched me so bad. It, it broke my heart. How did you comfort her or reassure her that everything was going to be okay? So in that moment, I knew what I had to do. You know, I'm the, I'm the mom who I'm going to put out the smoke. If, it, if the building is burning, I'm going to be calm because I know not to incite that in my children. Yeah. So immediately, I'm sure you saw on the tape, my job, I knew what to do. I had to keep her calm and she would not be calm and believe me if I didn't present the same way. So that's why you saw me. I just gently, I grabbed her head. That was to, you know, ground her and just say, I'm here. You didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. I'm telling you, and so is the officer. Absolutely. I know I know that. That that energy that your child <laughs> feels off of you, what you give, um, that's how they're going to respond. And so that is something that a mom would definitely do, jump into action right then and there. Um, you know, I want to know, did you ever receive an apology from your neighbor? Because I know he's now claiming that he's being harassed after all of this. Um, what do you say about that? So he apologized um, um, a couple minutes after. So what I do want to call out is that you know, the entire time this incident was happening, my neighbor was outside blowing his leaves. He's blowing the leaves. Um, the minute he heard, he should have heard me call to the police, same way he, the police heard, because he was closer and I, I yelled to the officer, please don't talk to her, that's my daughter, she's a minor. My neighbor heard that. He never felt the need to stop this interaction or anything, so that's number one. Number two, when it was over, I made it my business to go over there to speak to him to just say, what is going on to ask? I had questions, right. you know, and I asked him and his initial response to me was he thought, you know, he said, I'm sorry, Monique. I didn't know it was Bobby. I thought she was a lost little girl. I thought she was lost. I said to him, Gordon, how could Bobby be lost? First of all, you know Bobby, mm -hmm. and this is where she lives. How can she be lost where she lives on her street? Did you ask her if she was lost? He said to me that, um, he did not, and he said, well, I wasn't sure, Monique, you know, maybe it was a little old lady with dementia, I couldn't tell, and I immediately challenged him with the same thing. Gordon, did you ask the little old lady if she was lost? And he said to me, Monique, you can't be too careful, people are crazy out here. And that's when I really got upset, and I told him, I said, you know, Gordon, I'm going to walk away, but I'm going to let you know I don't appreciate this. Yeah. You have my daughter scared here, and my heart is racing, and... That's when he said to me after that, that his wife, he says, you know, Monique, I didn't know what was going on. My wife walks the dog. I didn't know what she was spraying. And I think that was the moment that I realized that this was about his discomfort. Mm. So to answer your question, he apologized, mm -hmm. but he apologized under a lie. So when I walked away, I was mildly annoyed, mm. you know, but when I saw that report and I heard the audio, it became instantly clear to me that he racially profiled her, had zero regard for her. Absolutely. When you watch the video, you hear the audio, uh, you could just definitely tell there was some un some underlying racism there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I saw a video, too, speaking of videos of you and your older daughter. You went to a city council meeting and spoke about this incident. What's the reaction been like from the town since this happened? So it's interesting. So initially, the town was very quiet. Um, you, you can you, I don't know if you saw the whole thing, the interaction with the panel, with the councilman. Um, the mayor was really the only one who offered um, any type of apology to me. Um, and there was a woman who spoke up a couple persons after Hayden. And she actually spoke up on my neighbor's behalf to let me know that racism doesn't live in our town. So that was the initial reaction. Um, and then as the days progressed, and um, I, as the days progressed, and I spoke about it and it, the progress of local newspaper got wind of it, and then it just went viral. Mm -hmm. And that's when I would say the town probably took more notice 
and started showing the support that they should have shown from the day one. You know, but the mayor did say to me he was sorry. I will admit that. Okay. Well, that that's good. You know, that's a start. You know, since all this has happened and since this has gone viral, what are you hoping will come from this? You know, for me, number one, I have to stabilize my home, my children. I have two daughters. You know, I have Hayden and Bobby. I have to make sure that they feel comfortable where they live when we walk out of, or walk out of our home, that they feel safe. That's the main thing for me. Number two is that I don't care if it was a little brown girl, green girl, purple. This should not happen to children. Okay. So the main thing that I'm hoping that's going to happen, that's going to come out of this, that there's some policies that my local government can make sure that they ensure that when people like my neighbor feel the need to call the police, because that's who showed up. Mm -hmm. If it's not an emergency, you shouldn't call. Right. You should have had a conversation, and there should be consequences to that behavior, because my daughter could be gone today. Exactly. Like the wrong police. Exactly. I'm clear on that. You are absolutely right. It is definitely nothing to play with calling the police on a, a black person for absolutely no reason. We've seen the consequences of that too many times. Um, lastly, we are running out of time, Monique, but I want to ask, because Monique, uh, um, excuse me, Bobby sounds very special, and I wanted to know what is behind her environmental activism? What makes her want to go out there and help save the planet? So Bobby, so her Bobby's nickname was Bobby Wonder, right? <laughs> so she started from she was a little girl. So I mean, she's still little now, but for some reason, she has this wonder about her. She it, she's my second born, and she is the most, I would say, outgoing. If Bobby is very much, if she hears about something, she wants to be involved. So she knew, she heard the state say, if you see this spotted lance and fly, kill it. It will destroy our agriculture. And she's like, mommy, we have those on the trees where we live. We have to save it. So I think this was just her being a natural scientist in her. That's also Bobby's DNA. She knew she had a responsibility. She took it personal. She said, I see these things. Mommy, can we go out? Can we kill them? I love Absolutely. that. We love that. Please send Bobby Wonder our love and our best, and we hope that she feels better. And we thank her for standing up for her environment and saving the planet for all of us to, you know, live in a better place. So thank you, Monique. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for amplifying this story. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys very much. Thank, thank you. you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Mm. Always bringing you the most relevant and important stories here to Fox News Black Report. Thanks for that, Mimi. It is official. Counties in Georgia can offer early voting this coming Saturday in the U.S. Senate runoff election. This is groundbreaking. The state had urged and argued allowing voting this Saturday is legal because it's within two days of a state holiday. Democratic incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock, he led the charge to sue for the extra day of voting. Well, Elon Musk has reinstated the personal account of far-right Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. That's right. Greene was banned from Twitter back in January for violating the platform's COVID misinformation policies. Her reinstatement is just one of many since Musk take over, since he took over the platform now over the weekend. Musk restored Donald Trump's account after he was banned following a deadly January 6th attack on the Capitol. And a former Boise, Idaho chief is under fire for having ties to a white supremacist group. Matthew Bryan recently retired after 24 years in the Boise, Idaho department. The former police chief has been found to have extensive ties to white supremacist groups. Uh, his connections allegedly include being scheduled to speak at an American Renaissance conference held by a group allegedly known for having demeaning thoughts of black people. In July of 2021, in a blog post, he stated he picked the Northwest City because it was primarily white. He also said that black police officers, including those at the Northwest Agency, were underachievers whose white pine their white pine white counterparts ranked above them and the mayor of Boise, Idaho is denouncing these findings. Mm. And one of this year's most viral debates has officially come to a close. Back in the spring, Florida A&M student Terrica Williams was under fire for posting a nude photo by the school's landmark snake. That sparked a debate about whether or not it was appropriate to take a photo like this on campus. Once the controversial photo traveled across social media, Florida A&M took away her master's diploma. Now, just seven months later, the HBCU has reversed this decision and awarded Williams her degree. But Williams says the damage has already been done. For months, she's been unable to gain internships without her master's degree. 
I mean, I don't know about that because I was able to get an internship with while I was still getting my bachelor's degree. So I don't know why she wasn't able to get an internship without her master's because so many, it, it, you know, I don't know what field it was in. So I, I was in well, radio. I think it was so in it was mental different. health. So maybe okay, so that she might needed be proof that she. A little bit different. Yeah. Absolutely. But mm -hmm. also, too, this just goes to show you that what you do online, what you do for clicks, it always follows you. Nothing on social media is ever removed. So even if she was to get her a degree, there's still a chance that when someone types in her name, Terrica Williams, on an application in the future, the photos oh, could still probably come yeah, up. For forever now. Absolutely. This is uh, something that she chose to do. Um, I know a lot of people who went to FAMU were not happy with this uh, decision, and so I just think it's something she's going to have to live with. I, yeah. I don't think. But, but I don't believe that she does not deserve her diploma, though. I don't. No, she. No, listen, if she you did the work, that. you yeah. deserve the you diploma. Earned that. Okay. She exactly. She earned it. Now, if the school wanted to discipline her and say, okay, maybe you can't attend graduation because you broke this rule and this rule, that is their right. Okay. But they still need to give her her diploma. Okay. If she if she did all that work and she was at class and graduated, and she got paid for it. She. And she paid for it, right? <laughs> she needs to get her diploma. There she definitely go. needs to get that. that. Right and there. they made it very clear when she took the picture that there was no one around campus, so it was not like she disrupted any school functions. Now, this may stunt her career growth. We understand that. But at the end of the day, they're saying, look, we're going to wash our hands with this. We feel like even though some people that felt uncomfortable about it, we're okay with it. She has a yeah, diploma, yeah. and hopefully it doesn't stop her from moving on. There we go. Yeah. All right, yeah. Let's see. All right, well, hip-hop's birthplace, New York City, is celebrating the culture's 50th anniversary in a big way next year. Take a look. This celebratory moment, celebrate the fact that you made me mayor. Mm -hmm. With your lyrics poured into me, gave me the inspiration. You told the story. You made me unafraid to tell my story because you were unafraid to tell our story. Wow. Mm -hmm. And because you were unafraid, I was unafraid as I went throughout this city, said, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened? People took me for who I am. Mm -hmm. Looking like Rev Run. Okay, New York City Mayor Eric Adams is launching a year-long year -long celebration. The city will partner with the Universal Hip Hop Museum to launch a year's worth of events and fundraisers in 2023 leading up to the official opening of the UHHM in the Bronx. Mayor Adams says the city is aiming to raise $50 million with that celebration. And when we think about that, right, there's a lot of merch that can be sold when we talk about 50 years of celebrating, but what about the hip hop artists that paved the way? Mm -hmm. So hopefully they can be Benefit from this as well. Hopefully, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. See it. All right, and a black man incarcerate, incarcerated in Louisiana is free after 39 years. The news comes after both the prosecution and his defense determined his attorneys were denied access to favorable evidence in the 1980s. Raymond Flanks was convicted of first degree murder back in 1985. Last week, a judge approved a deal for his release and apologized to him for being denied due process. His conviction stemmed from crimes involving a black gunman who showed up in a shower cap and targeted older women back in New Orleans in the 1980s. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg Jr. announcing last week he asked a judge to dismiss almost 200 convictions that were based on eight former New York cops whose work was found to no longer be credible. The judge agreed, wiping 188 convictions from the books. The eight cops involved are among a slate of New York PD officers who have already been convicted of crimes, including official misconduct, unlawful searches, perjury, even drug dealing. Those convictions led to defense attorneys sending letters to five New York borough prosecutors asking for reviews in crimes. Because of those reviews, 378 convictions have been tossed in Brooklyn, 250 in the Bronx, and 60 in Queens. An ex-Philadelphia officer will spend less than two years in prison for killing a 25-year-old black man. Eric Ruck Jr. was convicted of voluntary manslaughter and a weapons charge for fatally shooting an unarmed motorist, Dennis Plowden Jr. It happened six seconds after he arrived on the scene and while Plowden was sitting on the sidewalk after crashing a car during a high-speed chase. Months later, Ruck Jr. was fired from the department. He is one of the three city police officers who have been charged with murder for their on-duty actions by district attorney Larry Krasner, but a first-degree murder charge filed against Ruck was dropped before trial. The DA has 10 days to appeal the sentence. Meanwhile, Plowden's widow has won a $1.2 million wrongful death settlement from New York City.